A new collagen study has shown no effect for connective tissue protein synthesis and has gone viral on social media. It's a big deal because many people, myself included, take collagen peptide supplements to improve skin health and reduce wrinkles based off multiple previous studies showing a benefit. So before throwing away the collagen supplements, we need to relook at how strong the previous studies actually are and what this new study adds to the overall picture. Let's start with the controversy. Collagen peptide supplements have taken the original long chains of collagen ropes and chopped them up into short chains of amino acids to help absorption. The hope is that by providing these short collagen peptides, we can stimulate our body's own collagen production and improve our skin health. But that theory is incredibly controversial because when we consume protein, including protein powders, our digestive system chops up that protein into individual amino acids and short peptide chains. So critics of collagen supplements will say that so long as you're consuming enough protein, there will be no added benefit to collagen supplements because the result is the same. Both strategies, they provide our body with amino acids. There's a study that we'll cover later in the video that directly addresses those concerns, but for now, let's look at the randomized placebo-controlled trials to see how strong the evidence really is for collagen peptides to improve skin health and reduce wrinkles. We know that short peptides are absorbed from the gut into the human bloodstream by peptide transporter 1. The crucial point is that this transporter best transports peptides that only have two or three amino acids. So what effect do these peptides have on skin health? And don't worry, I will cover the controversy between collagen versus protein supplements later, plus the new study. But for now, let's look at this 2014 randomized placebo-controlled trial of 69 women. It looked at skin elasticity, moisture, water loss, and skin roughness. At the end of the study, skin elasticity showed a statistically significant improvement compared to placebo. It's fine to show a statistically significant improvement, but clinically what does that mean? Is that a 1% improvement in skin wrinkles? A 10% improvement? And how was the skin actually measured? Skin elasticity was measured by a cutometer. So a very objective measure, and they could see that the collagen supplement resulted in a 7% improvement in skin elasticity, which is a reasonable improvement for 8 weeks of treatment. Then in 2015, two randomized controlled trials were done, one looking at skin hydration and collagen density as measured by an ultrasound, and another study that took skin biopsies to look at the collagen under the microscope. After eight weeks of treatment, collagen supplements significantly increased skin hydration and the collagen density significantly improved. Plus, when the scientists looked at the skin biopsies, they could see that the collagen supplements resulted in a significant improvement in the collagen matrix. Again though, how much improvement are we actually talking about? Well, there was a 12% improvement in skin moisture and an 8.83% improvement in collagen density as measured by an ultrasound. Then in 2020, a meta-analysis was done that combined all of the relevant clinical studies to date, and it included 10 publications, all showing improvements in skin health parameters. Continuing the journey before we hit the controversy, in 2021, a randomized placebo-controlled trial was done in 99 healthy Japanese women. Using objective measures again, such as the cutometer, the scientists could see that collagen peptides resulted in significant improvements in the water content of the skin. But then they found something really intriguing. There were no improvements for skin elasticity or thickness, which is in stark contrast from the other results in the previous studies. Looking through the methods of that study, I couldn't figure out why the results were so different compared to the previous studies, but it's important to include. And just as we had a disappointing finding, another study in 2022 showed promising results. This one showed an 8% decrease in the wrinkles around the eyes. Fast forward to this year, 2023, and a new study was published that looked at possible reasons for why some of the studies resulted in disappointing findings. It wanted to figure out if there are specific peptides that result in improvements in skin health. It tested a specific collagen peptide supplement containing dipeptides, including a glycine and proline pairing, as well as a proline and hydroxyproline pairing. When that particular mixture was tested, we could see robust improvements in skin hydration, wrinkling, and elasticity. So it's possible that there are specific peptides that are responsible for the improvements in skin health. And finally, before we get into the peptides versus protein debate, a 2023 meta-analysis was published, which included 26 separate studies and it only included studies that just tested collagen peptides. Overall, they could see that collagen peptides resulted in significant improvements in skin hydration and elasticity. 
And when we examine the potential mechanisms for these benefits, previous studies have shown that specific peptides are transported to the skin and seem to linger longer in the skin compared to other organs. That's a crucial point which we'll reference later in the video. Now though, let's address the controversy. Do peptides offer any additional benefit for our skin beyond protein supplements? To explore this, a 2020 randomized double-blind placebo-controlled trial was done in burn patients. One group took 36 grams of hydrolyzed collagen and the other group took 35 grams of soy protein. The scientists found that the wound healing rate was significantly higher for the collagen group compared to protein. And crucially, in that study, there were no conflicts of interest, so this study it was not funded by a collagen supplement company. It's possible, and I do want to emphasize possible, that collagen peptide supplements, they've got specific peptides that seem to result in further improvements to our skin health, as per that 2023 meta-analysis that we went through earlier. Now we can go through the new study. It wanted to assess whether collagen protein may be effective in stimulating muscle connective tissue protein synthesis. Participants did a single session of resistance type exercise and then they either had 30 grams of whey protein, 30 grams of collagen protein or a placebo. Blood and muscle biopsies were then taken. So a couple of crucial points here. I don't know whether the study used collagen or collagen peptides because there is a big difference. And even though this study showed no improvements for muscle connective tissue protein synthesis, that's not the reason for why most people use collagen peptide supplements. We mainly use it for skin health, and as we've gone through earlier in the video, it's possible that there are specific peptides that target the skin. So even though the study has gone viral and many well-known health influencers have used the study as evidence for why collagen peptides don't offer any further value, I think we need to take a step back. This study looked at muscle, not skin, and I don't know whether it used collagen peptides or collagen. Plus, we have a mountain of evidence suggesting that there are benefits to skin health parameters such as moisture, elasticity and wrinkles when compared to a placebo. If we compare collagen peptides to protein, the peptides they do seem to improve wound healing rates, suggesting that there is a true effect. The lesson here is to look at the entire body of evidence and not just one study. We also need to think critically about new research rather than using it to confirm a previous bias for or against an intervention. And there are some really interesting avenues for further research. Are there specific peptides that offer benefits to skin? What is the ideal dose? And are there other peptides that can offer benefits to muscle connective tissue? Personally, I will continue supplementing with collagen peptide supplements because of the evidence that we've got for skin health. I do wonder though whether this field will progress to using specific peptides rather than a generic collagen peptide supplement. And make sure to check out this next video here on all of the strategies that we have available today to reduce skin wrinkles. And if you want early access to these videos as well as access to the Discord server, check out the pinned comment where you can find a link to my Patreon.